Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Wealth Around Us. Uh, Jinx was just sitting here reminding me that uh, we've got a bunch of work left to do here in the studio. Oh, she's going to come on me? Oh, she's going to come on me. Yes, that's it. She's, oh yes. Oh. Well, Jinx was just over there meowing and meowing at something and I said, well, what are you doing? Well, this just gave me a good chance to go ahead and do this video. I haven't uh, been keeping up with the videos and stuff lately because I've been at work. What you've been seeing is uh, the quail operation at the wealth around us. And this is, you know, th this is one of these small victories for my channel and, and my line of thinking and just, the, the, you know, my general philosophy of, you know, always remember there's a wealth around you. Uh, w one thing about domestic quail is they don't get broody. Um, there are instances of it out there recorded, I'm sure, but as far as I know, you can't get these things to sit on their eggs very well. So, you know, what you're obviously looking at is a homemade incubator I built. But as you can see, I put those on there and, you know, made sure that I did the line straight. It's got another set at the bottom, too. And that's naturally the heat pulls in fresh air and blows out old air so that, you know, they don't get uh, suffocated. That was a problem with some of the commercial brands was uh, these animals getting uh, suffocated trying to get out of their shells, which sucks, you know, totally sucks. But uh, what this thing is, it's basically a Omaha Steaks styrofoam cooler. You don't have to use this brand. I just used it because I had it. Uh, someone sent me some Omaha Steaks one time. I'm from Omaha. Uh, me and Hank sat down for about 20 minutes one day and built this thing out of barely anything. It is a... Uh, see if I can get you a good shot of it. It is a computer fan blowing past a 15-watt light bulb onto an electric water heater thermostat set just so. Now I had my misgivings about this guy to start with. I said, well, you know, hell, this is less this is less than like five dollars worth of parts. Um, I mean it's a swagger kit was the wiring. I mean it was just just cheap stuff. Uh, the, the expensive stuff was the uh, <coughs> the thermometer, which you can see right there, and it is a dual type purpose uh, humidity and temperature monitor now uh, I know it's a little hot for quail eggs in there but it fluctuates about five degrees so and that amounts to an internal temperature difference that's really not much different uh, because of that I ordered a uh, standard incubator and, and uh, the quail rails and the turner and the, you know all the, the whole shebang the whole nine yards but uh, I was real surprised to get one see see an egg hatch the other day and I said oh wow so I came in here and you know pulled them out and I set up a brooder and uh, there you can see it just turned off but uh, I was real real super surprised to start finding lo and behold let's see if we can get it there see there's one I got to get have to pull that baby out of there because he's starting to get a little dried out and uh, I'm gonna throw him in the brooder we have right there one pipping out. He's been having some trouble, so I may help him out of a shell, although he's picked up the pace and he's really pushing it. Um, a very special egg to me, that one the beam is on right now. Uh, that was the first egg out of this hybrid that I have been uh, watching real close. I call her Seagull. She's a real cool look, and she looks like a seagull. That's exactly it. She is a Tennessee uh, red Texas A&M hybrid. She has a Tennessee red back and a big white belly and I think that this is one of my hybrids right here if if not uh, there's a very interesting story that goes along with that and I'll show you that real quick <clears throat> there is Jinx being a very good kitty she never messes with the birds but this is my new brooder setup that just goes right on top of the cage I'm keeping the ruse in I'm gonna find something to do with them and soon it's gonna be their home until they reach the age I can take them out there into the brooder but uh, not only has that little homemade piece of crap worked um i've still got four left in there i gotta get uh there is a tennessee red that hatched there is a hybrid that hatched and there's two more hatching so there's four more i have to get in there before i go to sleep tonight because i, I lost 
three of them to the water bowl this morning. Don't ask me how they climbed up and got into that water bowl. It's it's like three times their height. I don't know, but they must have jumped up on the eggs or something, thought it was water, tried to get in there. But uh, let's get you a closer look at the babies. Very interesting stories going on here. Uh, these old, this little tired fella right here, he's just, he just got put in there a little while ago. His feathers are just now drying out. Um, I was real surprised to find that I am getting three different kinds of chicks. Oh, this guy's doing a lot better. Yeah, he was, he's a newborn too. He was just put in there a few hours ago. He's, he's only a couple hours old. And I call him Clockwork Orange because you can see... He's got a ride out here. Let me turn the lights on for you. He's got a right eye, a left eye that has a big black ring around it. And the other one doesn't. So I thought that was really cool. So it was like, if we want something, we just pluck it from the trees. So anyway, um, I'm trying to get the lighting done as best as I can here, but... These guys are all tuckered out, but yeah, um, I have a population of what I believe. Okay, here's the whole story. Uh, I bought these from a breeder who was who had them, um, the Tennessee Reds and Texas A&Ms, all in the same cage. Um, funny story on these guys right here, these beauties. These are three Coternix roosters, is what I believe. I mean, they have the uh, they have the markings. But they are they do that and they're big and they're big and strong. So I'm thinking these could be hybrids too, and these just have, you know, a different morphology to their to their uh coat. But uh these roosters right here, I, I mean I could swear to god they're Codernex roosters, which is Codernex japonicus. Uh people call them pharaohs. But as you can see here, I'm getting babies that look like pharaohs. This is my little Tennessee red and you can see because he's so dark but now over here kaboom I have what appears to be a Texas A&M chick I mean we have several of these and we we're hatching them regularly and yeah that appears to be a Texas A&M chick I got nothing for you but it's very interesting to see uh, my Tennessee reds and these hybrids slinging what appear to be three different kinds of quail. So what I'm going to do is separate each, you know, wait till they get older and find out what each one is and separate them into their, their flock because I have a Tennessee red side to the quail pen outside and I have a hybrid side, which I will do a, another video and I will get a, a Tennessee red and a hybrid and a Codernix out for you and I'll show you their comparative coats and stuff like that. But uh, this is just an update. Everything's going real good with the quail operation at the whale at the wealth around us. No, just pull it back and show you just just how simplistic that setup is. Piece of chicken wire, some leftover Rubbermaid Tupperware crap, and some hay from outside and the canna lilies. A piece of newspaper, a couple of lids, and an old light and a swagger kit that I set up just specifically for this purpose. But this is where they go. I mean, this this uh, guy right here is just going to keep pumping them out and pumping them out. And as they, you know, some of these guys are three days old, some of them are one day old. But uh, that's how it's going to go. And already I've upped my population. Um, in two weeks, they're going to be ready to fly. They're going to eat a lot of food. And in around six weeks, they're going to be ready to butcher. Uh, if you wait more than six weeks, I have been getting, if you see the size of that bastard right there. And he's a bastard too. I mean, this guy and this guy. This guy, the little, slightly littler one, is a lot meaner than either one of these two. But look how big they are. I mean, in comparison to my hand, I mean, they're, they're more than a handful. I mean, they're a big, meaty bird, and there's a surprising amount of meat on them for that size. So, I don't know exactly what the guy was getting at if he was looking for production birds or if he was looking for meat birds, but they're absolutely beautiful. And uh, if you wait more than six weeks to, say, like eight weeks, you're going to have a good, another good four ounces of meat on them. So I'm real pleased with my population here and the way things are going. And uh, it was real easy. I didn't barely spend any money doing this stuff. So uh, uh, glad you're watching. And uh, I'll be back more shortly with the quail operation and a lot more with the uh, Outside the Box series and different segments on the wealth around us. So thanks for watching, everybody. And always remember, there's a wealth around you. Be good.